Welcome. In this video, we are going to look at important JavaScript libraries that ship with Gutenberg. There are a number of different libraries which we can reference, but the ones that we will use most often are WP Element, WP Blocks, WP Components, and WP I189. So let's break these down a little bit more and look at each one individually. WP Element is the WordPress abstraction layer on top of React as well as React DOM. And we will use this for creating elements inside of our block. So this is basically going to be the WordPress API for React. Then we have WP Blocks. This contains components and functions for building blocks. So for example, our register block type function is going to be stored in here, as well as different components that we could use to construct our own blocks. We also find in this library a directory with all of the core blocks that ship with Gutenberg itself, so you could go in and see how they work and copy and paste code or look at how it's working to mimic functionality of what you get out of the box. Then we have WP Components. These are higher level components, more generic than what you see in the blocks directory that could be used for building interfaces within the Gutenberg editor. And these can be as simple as tooltips or buttons to more complex things like panels, but really things that are more generic than just what you see inside of a block itself. Then we have WP I189 or the internationalization library that allows WordPress to translate strings used in our JavaScript. So if you've built anything with PHP and WordPress before, hopefully you've already come across the underscore underscore methods in all their variations. And now we have this on the client side. So we will use this everywhere we put in raw text into our JavaScript so that those strings can be translated using the normal translation method for WordPress plugins. Now we could get access to all of these libraries currently as global variables. So what do I mean by that? If I log into a site that has the Gutenberg editor enabled and I come onto any page, I could type WP dot elements or element in the console and have access to it as a global variable. So normally when we're writing JavaScript, the functions that we use and the methods that we use and the variables that we use are only accessible within our own code. This has to do with scoping in JavaScript. However, it is possible either by accident or in this case on purpose to make parts of your code available globally so that other JavaScript files can access it. So we have access to all of these libraries that we just referenced. And if you open these up, you could see that they contain all the different components and things that we would expect them to have. Now coming into the code look, how we would reference getting functions from global scope would look something more like this. So this is using object deconstruction to basically grab a method off of the I18N internationalization library that's stored inside the WP global variable. So in our code, we could just refer to WP I18N and we'll make sure that we enqueue it properly, which we will learn. And then we could use object deconstruction to pull that out. So this is the common method you're gonna see. Here's another example of pulling stuff out of the blocks library. And now in our code, we just have a function named underscore underscore register block type and rich text. So we could use those either as functions or components depending on what they are. So this will make more sense as we go along and get access to things. But again, the important thing to mention at this point is just that these libraries are made available as global variables. And again, primarily we will be dealing with WP element, blocks, components, and I18N. So go ahead, try to play around with those, check those out, and then we will keep looking at a high level how we could get ready to build some blocks.